Hey everybody, this is my 20 gallon open topped office tank and tonight we're just going to do a simple before and after video. I'm going to do a water change and we will get in there, do a nitrate test and I got to have a look at the filter and get that probably uh, cleaned out. You can see how we're getting very little water flow. I do have the valve turned all the way up so it should be full flow. And yet you can see how a little bit of trickle we're getting coming out of there. And we're not getting any backflow. So it's not a matter of too much water flowing through it and not being able to get through the filter, which is when we would get the backflow. So what I suspect is it's a combination. Um, uh, well, you know, that's probably not restricting the water as much as it might look right there at all. Where we've probably got the restriction is inside the actual filter intake so I'll have to get in here and this intake simply pops right out and I'll have to get in there and clean that out a little bit that has to be done from time to time uh, to keep the filter flowing properly so we'll check the nitrates we'll do a water change I will clean out the filter and then we will talk about anything I found plus we'll have a look at the fish a little more closely once the tank is done so there's your before and there's your after so as I suspected, when we got into the filter, the little bit of Java Windelov babies that you saw stuck in the intake there were not really what was uh, clogging it up. It was just growth and grunge and stuff that develops inside that uh, filter intake and a little bit of hot water and rinsing it out in the sink got it running back just back to normal and uh, everything's fine. So... The nitrate test has been sitting here for a few minutes now, and it's actually a lot lower than I was expecting it to be. We're not even uh, up into the red yet. We're still in the orange, and it's been a few weeks since I've done a water change. You remember I did all of the um, treatment in this tank with the meds, and then I did a water change after that, but it's been a little while since that was finished, and so I was expecting the nitrate level to be much higher than we actually just saw it so the ram itself is looking good you can see that the swelling on the eye that eye right there that we're looking at is the one that was infected and sort of popped out of its head and you can see it's pretty much back to normal as far as I can tell when I look at it now you know, I can kind of maybe tell that it looks like it was a little bit popped out, but I think that's only because I know that that is the case. If I was simply looking at this fish for the first time, I don't think it would even cross my mind that anything was wrong with it or it had just suffered from an eye being bulged out of the side of its head. So it went through a rough couple of days. Its eye was sticking out. Um, its color was just completely washed out. It was just sitting in the corner underneath the heater and very lethargic. So the medication treatment worked, bringing the temperature in the tank back up. Uh, see there, you get a good look at how both of the eyes are pretty much flush with the head again. You've got very little bulging on that right eye at all. So very happy about that. This is an awesome little fish, and I've really had a lot of success with it so far. I was really worried when I first got it. I've heard a lot of uh, stories about how difficult this fish is to keep and when I first started keeping the rams years ago when I first started keeping fish I fell in love with these little fish and I tried and tried and tried I must have kept 10 of them and none of them lasted more than a couple of weeks and I never increased the temperature of my tank I always just added these two tanks in the same way that you know I would add my Bolivian rams or you know, if I bought some more guppies or whatever, just, you know, room temperature, 75 to 78 degrees, and I never had any luck with these rams at all. So I was always told that it was because they're super sensitive to nitrates and water changes and all these other things. And so I stayed away from them for years and years because I'm not shy about letting my nitrates get up there a little bit. And when I do water changes, sometimes they're you know, a little more frequent or a little less frequent. Sometimes I do really big water changes. And so I kind of assumed any fish that was that hypersensitive was just not the fish for me. And not too long ago, I decided I was going to give it a shot again. I'd been convinced by enough people that the nitrates were not an issue, uh, keeping them in, you know, normal amounts of nitrates, 40, 50, 60 parts per million nitrates wasn't going to kill this fish. 
what was going to kill this fish was keeping it in temperatures that were too low for it. Everybody recommended at least 82, 84 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, you know, or above, you know, all the way up to 86 to 88 degrees is, is fine for this fish, apparently. And so that is what I've done. That's the only thing I'm doing differently uh, on this attempt. Well, I'm doing two things differently. One is that I bought better stock this time. I didn't get this one from the big chain pet store. I got this one from my good fish store. And I'm pretty sure they come from local breeders rather than these big sort of uh, fish farms. I guess it's the fish equivalent of like a puppy mill. And you don't get very good genetics out of these places. Um, not to mention they come all full of antibiotics and everything else. And that's why a lot of times when you bring these home from the store, or a lot of times you bring any fish home from the store, you'll see that it's pooping white or it's got white stringy poop. Um, that's because of all the antibiotics these fish are kept in. Um, you know, when they're bred the way they're bred and then they suddenly come home and they get a your tank and their guts are all messed up and they're being introduced to new bacteria and it takes a little while for their digestion to work out. So, you know, getting fish from the big chain pet stores isn't necessarily a bad idea, but there are certain fish you just kind of want to avoid getting from that sort of fish mill, fish farm uh, kind of environment and these German blue rams apparently are one of them. So in this case, I got good stock. And in this case, I'm keeping the tank. Uh, it fluctuates between 29 and 31 degrees. So I'm in the mid to upper 80s on the Fahrenheit scale. And that seems to be doing just fine. The guppies don't seem to mind it at all. And the ram is absolutely thriving in here. It looks gorgeous. Its colors are good. Its behavior is normal. I'm very, very happy with it. So all in all, nothing to complain about. Uh, on a final note, I will say that my temple plant is starting to recover. I'm starting to get not only a lot of green leaves on it, but if you see all these little tiny things, those are all flower pods or, or flower buds. And if you look around very carefully, you will see the occasional little purple flower. Now, it won't be too long before they're starting to develop and drop, and you can see one right there. And I'll have little purple flower petals floating around on the surface of the tank. And of course, you know, not long ago, I had dead leaves floating all over the surface of the tank because of what this poor plant went through. But it looks like it's recovering. And as much as I've chopped it back, it should grow in nice and dense and bushy. And if we're getting uh, flower buds on all those little, um, you know, different nodes, then this should turn out to be quite a bit of flowers. And if I'm not mistaken, it was cyclical. We started down low, and as these flowers were finishing up, the flowers above it were just starting to develop, and it sort of moved in a wave all the way up the plant. And we got a lot of flowers off of it the first time, but the first time it also was not all bushy like this. It was more uh, intact from just growing straight up and out of the, the tank, more sort of Christmas tree style, whereas this is more shrubbery style and it'll be interesting to see how uh it flowers like this probably the same way it'll start down low and it'll just work its way up it'll just be more of a cascading effect because of the uh branching growth on it now so there you go make sure you subscribe that way you won't miss anything including the growth of my temple plant and don't forget i sell my temple plant and my java fern and all that stuff i pulled a whole bunch of babies out of the tank i guess i should have mentioned that um you can see one floating by right there so i pulled uh stuff smaller than that out and i pulled a bunch of stuff bigger than that out and i pulled a bunch of pieces like that out and then of course i've got bunches of it down the basement in my grow out tanks and i've got buckets down there with air stones in them so i've always got tons of java fern and the java windelove and the windelove is this stuff it's got the sort of fingery tips on it unlike the regular java fern uh which i guess you're all familiar with it's very common so anyway, if you're interested in any aquatic plants for sale, check my email down in the description below. Hit me up. We'll talk. I sell them cheap, and I haven't had anybody unhappy with whatever they've gotten from me so far. So check my email down below. Hit me up, and we'll talk. So thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss anything I've got coming up. And then don't forget, of course, this is my 20-gallon open-topped office tank. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you real soon on the next one.